Hello all, my name is Vipin Kirapat. I am an assistant professor with the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering. Today I will be giving you a short tutorial on Internet of Things using Amazon AWS IoT. So in your previous lectures you have seen introduction to IoT, what are the different protocols used in IoT etc. I am trying to do a practical example how you can quickly see IoT in action using Amazon Web Service. So as an introduction, let me quickly give a general IoT architecture. Okay, so here we are aiming at a cloud-based IoT implementation. So generally we will have at the bottom of the pyramid sensors and actuators which are accepting data from the surrounding depending upon your IoT application. It may be temperature, pressure sensor, etc. And the output of these sensors will be usually sent to a local processing, which is a low-end uh, computers, embedded uh, computing platform for, for some kind of filtering because you don't want to send all the data that you are receiving from the sensors to the cloud because uh, this requires bandwidth, which ultimately translates to money. So you want to reduce the cost. So you may do some local processing. For example, when you are measuring temperature, you are interested only if the temperature goes beyond a certain value. Only in that case, you want to send it to the cloud. Okay. So you will do some local processing and usually we will store it locally also because in case uh, something happens to the cloud or if we are not able to ac access the cloud, we may still want to use that data. So we usually uh, store it locally, maybe on a SD card or on some local hard disk and along with that that uh, filter data is sent to the cloud through internet okay so then it reaches the cloud platform so you can use different cloud platforms so one of the most popular nowadays is the AWS platform from Amazon uh, there are other platforms also uh, Microsoft Azure that is also equally popular then there are other uh, third-party cloud platforms also so in the cloud you can do whatever you want with this data maybe you can do some analytics on this data to find out what is happening maybe you can store this data in the cloud maybe you can send this data to some other place maybe through email or through SMS to other parties who are interested in this data etc so i'll try to cover a, a basic tutorial where we will have some data and we will send it to the cloud and uh, we may send that data through email or sms something like that so some basic processing now uh, the protocols used in iot i guess in the previous lecture it is covered but for for complete let's let me go through it once again so the most widely used protocol whenever you are connecting with internet is http or https protocol but in cloud application uh, we might be dealing with uh, low-end computing platforms as i mentioned before so these protocols uh, they are usually quite heavy i mean computationally as well as they are memory intensive so this low-end platform they may not be able to handle such heavy protocols. Also, HTTP protocol that is more suitable for point-to-point -point communication. So you have a, a so-called a client computer like our laptop or desktop PCs, and we have a server like uh, our Google server, Facebook server. So HTTP, HTTPS, they are more suitable for point-to-point -point communication. Two parties are communicating with each other. But in IoT, what happens is uh, many a times you get some data from these uh, these edge devices, and you want to send that same data to many other uh, endpoints. We usually call the subscribers. So in that case, uh, we may have to develop new protocol which are more suitable for IoT. Okay, so these things motivated to go for. Uh, a different protocol for IoT and I'm sure in the previous lecture you have seen this MQTT protocol this is one of the uh, widely used protocols so I'm only looking at MQTT because this is the one we are going to use which stands for message queuing and telemetry transport protocol we are not going into the details of the protocol we just want to look at the terminologies 
used when we are communicating using this particular protocol so we have so called uh, publishers and subscribers okay these are the endpoints so publishers they are the one who are generating the data for example if i have a temperature sensor i read temperature sensor and i send it to the the cloud so in that sense i become a publisher so subscribers they are the one who are finally receiving the data from the cloud okay so they get the message that whatever i send may be in its original format or after certain processing so the guy who is sitting in between we call them mqtt brokers they are the one who are accepting messages from these publishers and sending it into the subscribers so as i mentioned before you can see like uh, data is coming from one party but it is sent to multiple parties at the same time now whenever a publisher publishes or sends some message it is usually tagged with a topic okay so again this is a virtual concept uh, so when i send some message i will say this message is under this certain topic so that the broker can send that message to all the subscribers who have subscribed to that uh, particular topic right so this is similar to our what you say mailing list and all so you subscribe to a particular mailing list and what our email is coming to that email list you you get it so similar concept that is what is happening so it was initially developed by ibm and eurotech but currently it is an open source you you can freely use it now these are the terminologies as i mentioned before these are the only three things you need to remember from mqtt what is meant by mqtt client what is meant by a server or the broker mqtt broker and what is meant by a particular topic so we will practically do it so maybe things will be clear now now uh, when we use aws uh, for iot our publishers and subscribers we call them edge devices or end devices so these are some of the practically used one we can use raspberry pi or beagle bone or Grow iot development board we have all of them in our lab in in the department so you can come and use them uh, these are again as i mentioned before these are single board computers they are like a complete computing system they have uh, a processor they have memory they have input output you can connect a keyboard mouse you can connect them to internet also that is one of the most important thing because if you want to communicate with uh, a, a broker who is connected through internet you definitely need some internet connectivity so some of them they have built-in wi-fi for example raspberry pi 3 it comes with built-in wi-fi but you can connect through ethernet also other platform they have wi-fi uh, for example vehicle phone it has wi-fi or you can add some some daughter cards to enable them to connect to internet okay so these are uh, we call as the edge devices and usually they are the one acting as uh, publishers and subscribers now there are other lower end computing platforms also you might have heard about arduino but arduino platforms they may not be very suitable when we are using aws as our broker because as you go along you will see uh, aws they put uh, high emphasis on security so the computing platform it should be able to do certain encryptions and decryption so the processor that you are using it should have some certain computing capability okay so if you go for very low end processes it may not be able to do this encryptions and decryption so all these processes are actually arm based processes so they can run uh, operating system they can run uh, some version of linux on them and uh, they can do certain encryption and decryption they can also since they are supporting this operating system they can run some level of uh, development platforms as well as what i mean is they may be able to run your c code or python code okay so that's what we are looking at okay so only this much is in the presentation now we will go ahead and practically try it out so for for tutorial i am going to use my laptop itself as my end device okay as my edge device what i am doing on my laptop you can do the same thing on any of these boards also but for for demonstration purpose 
uh, I'm just using my laptop. So now let's go ahead and uh, see the practical stuff. So to use AWS IoT, the first thing you need is an account with uh, Amazon Web Service. So you can go to aws.amazon.com and you can start a new account. So usually when we hear the term Amazon, we think about the online uh, shop where you can buy whatever you want. But actually Amazon is much more. So the lion portion of their income is coming from their cloud computing platform called the Amazon Web Service, AWS. So through AWS, Amazon, they provide a lot of services. So through AWS, maybe you can lease computing platform. That means you can lease processes, memories, GPUs, things like that. And you can use them. And based on how much you are using and how long you are using, you will be paying Amazon. Uh, similarly, you can buy storage uh, like OneDrive or Dropbox. Same way you can buy storage also from Amazon that is a different kind of service and uh, sometimes you can uh, take software from AWS like you don't have to buy this license separately but you can run certain software in their service and based on your usage model you pay them now uh, you will go here and you will click on sign into the console and you can start a new account now the first year usage is free with AWS with uh, certain restrictions. Okay, so for, depending upon what service you are using, there are some certain restrictions on this uh, free level. So beyond this free limit, you will have to pay. So uh, use it wisely. So for IoT, the chances of uh, incurring any cost in the first year is very low, but still you should be careful. But uh, as a student, you can sign up for AWS Educate program. If you sign up for that, they will be providing you $100 credit every year. Okay, so I already have an account, so I will just say sign in. You will start a new account and you will have to give your credit or debit card details, and after that, you will sign in. So, this is something called as the AWS console, and from here, you will be requesting for the services from AWS. Now, if you go to services, you can see there are so many. Now, there are hundreds of services provided by AWS. Okay, so this S3 is the storage service, and EC2 is the Elastic Cloud Computing, where you are taking compute platform processes and memory from uh, AWS. Now, we are going to use IoT service. So, when you are using first time, you can just search for IoT here and uh, even in iot there are different options the one we are going to use is iot core which is used for connect devices to the cloud okay so that's what our aim is uh, you can take analytics and all okay using which you can do analytics on top of the data you are getting if you are interested but today we are going to look at uh, iot core only okay so choose iot core Then this console comes up, okay? So this is the console for AWS IoT. So on the left, you can see. And here, again, lot of lot of uh, options are there on the left. And here is the monitor. Here you can see like how much you are using the AWS platform, uh, how many messages you send, how many messages you received, things like that, okay? And what is the status of your uh, things? etc so when you are doing it first time i would recommend to go to this option learn and uh, they have a tutorial here which nicely shows the overall concept of aws iot okay so this is how it looks like so as i mentioned before here they have some kind of switch which can send rgb Okay, so there are three switches whenever you press a particular switch some particular message is sent from this end device to the cloud so this is our broker and these are our client so this is a publisher the switch and this is a subscriber the bulb so whenever you are pressing a certain button the publisher he'll be sending some message to the broker then the broker will be sending that message to the subscriber so when i am sending r 
okay he might be sending a message using the topic uh, r here maybe he'll be sending topic g here he may be sending topic b or he may be sending some topic uh, switch pressed and he may somehow indicate which which switch is pressed then that information comes here and based on that the light bulb glows okay so that's the brief introduction then uh, one thing uh, you may look here is the protocols supported by AWS IoT so he supports MQTT protocol it also supports HTTPS protocol also okay so both are supported we are going to use so called the MQTT protocol this one now when you are using this protocol again if you are familiar with uh, these protocols uh, there is something called port number so whenever you are sending a message there will be some information about so called port number which helps the computer to identify uh, which service in your computer is requesting for this particular message so each each message will have a certain port number so the mqtt protocol it uses the port number 8883 now this port number depending upon which wi-fi network you are using may be or may not be accessible so if you are using any wi-fi this port is blocked by the network administrator to prevent outside attack to the university network so you will have to use your own wi-fi or you can use your own uh, mobile hotspot whenever you are using uh, aws iot or if you are using your home wi-fi uh, this port will be available to you so you can go ahead and use it because this is one of the common mistake we will find like common error we will encounter when we try to connect and the connection doesn't happen because this port is blocked by the network administrator okay that's it so remaining tutorial you can go ahead and read yourself it's very easy to understand and it gives an overall overview of uh, aws iot so what we are going to do is uh, i will try to connect my laptop with the IoT platform and try to send some message here okay so when are you have an IoT application first thing you need to do is you need to register your end device whether it is publisher or subscriber with the AWS IoT so you need to register your end device your edge device with the broker so for that you should go to manage and here you will see the option things okay so a thing is anything publisher subscriber yes see you can see here so it can be temperature sensor it can be your car it can be windmill it can be a robot whatever is your end device that should be registered with the broker so you just go ahead and choose register uh, thing and you choose register a single iot thing if you have a lot of things of same type you can go for bulk register but i have only one thing so choose create single thing and you need to give some name to your thing some unique name so i am using my laptop so let me call my thing as my laptop and other option you can leave uh, for the time being and you can click next and here there is something called add a certificate i will discuss it later uh, for the time being you can just click create the thing without certificate okay so once you do that now whenever you come under things your your endpoint will be listed here if you want to remove it from here you can just go ahead and click delete so your thing will get unregistered from the iot platform okay so now you have registered your thing now later i will be sending some message from my laptop and it should be accepted by the broker now, as I mentioned before, Amazon, they put heavy emphasis on security. Okay? So he wants to make sure it is my laptop who is sending this message. So this is what we call as authentication. So you need to authenticate. So you see authentication everywhere. So the most common one is using the username and password, right? Whenever even you are logging into Amazon, you have to provide your username and password to prove that this is you. Now, when we are doing IoT using these kind of things, it may not be practical to always send the username and password because as you have seen before, these edge devices, they usually won't have any monitor 
things like that they will oh, just have a connectivity to internet so there won't be any option to enter username or password okay and uh, you can't be always at the device also to enter these details so here authentication is done in a different way it is done through something called uh, certificates through so-called public key and private key maybe you have heard about these terms before because in, in some other places also we are using this concept okay so here what happens is your thing should be associated with a particular public key as well as a private key okay so the private key you will keep with your end device itself for example in my laptop itself and the public key you can freely distribute to other people now whenever my device tries to connect to the the broker he will send me certain message which is encrypted using my public key and that message i will have to decrypt using my private key and send it back to the broker now when the broker gets that message back if it is matching with the initial message he will know like okay so these two keys are matching so this guy should be the owner of this particular uh, public key so based on that he will give me access to the server okay so that's how it is happening here so first thing you need to do is you need to go ahead and create these keys public key private key for your edge device as well as uh, so-called some certificates so you should go to secure and there there is an option certificates and you should choose create a certificate and just choose one click certificate creation and you click on that so when you do it you will get yeah three things here one is a public key one is a private key as i mentioned before then there is something called a certificate also which again uh, has the information about the public key so these are three files and you need to download all those files and keep it in your end device so i'm just keeping them in a folder here in addition to that you need to download a certificate for amazon aws also okay so i'm not going into the details of uh, how certificates work here because our aim is to just run some iot application so you click on this link go here and choose this option amazon root ca1 and uh, that's the certificate you right click and choose save as and uh, when you are saving just remove this txt extension and just save it okay so we have four files now here so you are uh, certificate this is amazon's certificate so instead of dot crt you can call it dot crt certificate and when you open it you can see like this certificate is uh, what our, what the purpose is okay and this is the certificate for your device okay so you should download them at this point especially the private key because once you go out of this page you will not be able to access the private key again this happens only once if you lose your private key you will have to regenerate a, a new set of keys okay so after this you click activate so that your certificates are activated and just say done okay now under certificates you will always see this certificate number so what you need to do is you need to attach this this certificate these keys with your particular thing so you click here you choose attach thing and choose the name of the thing to which you want to attach the certificate okay so now you have attached it so as i mentioned before from next time onwards whenever my laptop is trying to connect with aws he will make sure he will authenticate that uh, this is my laptop indeed using these keys and certificates so we are done with authentication next is something called authorization okay so you will have to tell the broker whether 
a particular endpoint he is allowed only to publish or whether he is allowed only to subscribe whether he is authorized to publish as well as subscribe things like that okay so that's what we call as authorization so authorizations they are done through so-called policies so under security itself you will see the next option policies so you go there and choose create a policy okay so again you have to give some name to your policy let's say like my iot policy and here you can say like what all your iot thing uh, allowed to do so this is the syntax you have to type iot colon publish if you want to allow him to publish iot colon subscribe if you want him to allow subscription or in shorthand you can write iot colon star that means your end device he is allowed to do whatever he wants okay now after that again uh, you can restrict at uh, topic level also so for a particular topic he can publish and subscribe for a particular topic he can only subscribe things like that so you have that kind of control so here you need to specify something called ARN which stands for Amazon resource number so when are you create a uh, anything in amazon for example this is a certificate at the top you will see some number okay so this is what we call as the arn which is a unique number this one is the complete arn so anything you do in aws not only in iot wherever you use aws any resource that you create it will have a unique number which they call as the arn amazon resource number so for our thing also we will have an error this is the unique uh, identity of our our thing as far as aws is concerned so you can provide that number to apply this policy to a particular topic from a particular endpoint now if you if you are not worried about uh, that much okay let's go back my iot policy you can just write star there that means this policy is applicable to all the devices with all the policies okay so you choose allow if you choose deny means okay this action is not allowed for any device with any topic so you should choose allow that means any device with any topic is allowed to do whatever they want okay and choose create so now you have a policy again you can delete it if you want now your policy should be also associated with that certificate so we need to go back to certificates and choose attach policy and choose this policy attach okay so this much is the basic things you need to do in the aws platform to to enable your end device to connect to the aws platform so remaining thing you will have to do in your end device so the first thing that you have to do is download all the certificates and key that we have already done next one we will have to write some code okay so i am not expecting you to be expert in programming although I, I guess most of you have some background so we are preferring python programming language so you can go and download python from python.org website okay you can download the latest version uh, which i guess is 3.7 now so you download and install python i have already installed it now in addition to that we need one more so-called library which doesn't come as part of standard python so what you need to do is well, after you install python you need to type pip install paho hyphen mqtt this is an additional library which you need to install again in my laptop it's already installed that's why he's saying requirement already satisfied in your laptop he might be installing it now once you type it okay so you need this much now after that uh, we can try to send some 
message to the IoT. Now, as I mentioned before, I, I am not expecting you to be experts in programming, but Python is a very simple language. So the program uh, I will give you in the description of this video, and I will briefly uh, give you some idea what we are trying to do. Okay, so in this program, you will see this part, which is specifying the information about the public key and private key that you just generated. Okay, so the first one is uh, the address of your thing. So again, this is a unique number, which is identifying your thing in AWS. So to get this number, what you should do is you should go back to your AWS IoT and go to settings and there you will find this unique address of your endpoint. Okay, so you need to choose it and uh, you need to paste that here. So for each one of you, that will be different. Now the port number, as I mentioned before, Amazon is using 8883. Now client ID and thing name, they are the names of the endpoint that you uh, want to access. Okay, so this number, this is unique for one uh, user account. Okay, every time I create a new thing, this, this uh, address is not going to change. It remains the same. That is unique for my account here. But uh, this one will be different for each different thing that I want to uh, access. So I have my laptop here. So you need to give the same thing here. My laptop as client ID as well as thing name. Now this is the certificate. So this is the name of Amazon's certificate. So when we downloaded four files, okay, this one is so-called Amazon certificate. So you need to copy paste that name there and keeping everything in the same folder so that you just have to give the name of the file. If you are keeping them in different folders, you have to give the full path name. So here you need to give the file name of your certificate, which is this one. So as I mentioned before, that certificate already has the information about your public key. So that's why we don't give the public key separately. And finally, you need to give the file name of your private key. Okay. So this is here. It's written private.pem key. So this is your private key. So you give all those information. Okay. So that's it. So remaining code, uh, it doesn't matter whether you really understand it at this point of time at least okay so at the top uh, you will see two functions here okay so first function it's called on connect function second function is called on message function so what happens is whenever your laptop gets connected to aws successfully this piece of code will run okay this function will run and basically what he does is he will just print a message connected to aws on your screen so from this you can find out whether your laptop has connected to aws or not if this if this is not coming means your laptop has not connected okay so what message we are going to send this is the message we are going to send i am creating some random number okay uh, as the temperature so i don't have a temperature sensor to measure the actual temperature so i'm taking a random number between 20 and 25 and i'm going to send that message so how i am sending you can see here the code publish okay so i'm going to publish this information and the topic i'm going to use is let's call it uh, temperature topic okay so this is what we call as the topic so every message should be associated with some topic so this is my topic and this is the message i am sending and the last one is called qos quality of service i'm not sure whether it was covered in last uh, lecture this is something unique to mqtt protocol to make sure your message really reaches the broker so we are setting at uh, qos one and once we send the message on the screen i will just print message send and whatever value i send okay. 
now if i am not able to connect to aws you will keep on getting uh, this message on the screen waiting for connection waiting for connection so whenever you are modifying your code the only thing that you need to change is is this part wherever you are creating the message other than that uh, everything remains constant okay so just keep that in mind okay so now let's go ahead and uh, try so let's go to okay so let's try to run okay so you can see this message connected to aws connection return result zero so that is basically coming from here connected to aws connection result uh, connection return result some number so if it is zero that is indicating we are successfully connected so once connected okay we will keep on sending this random temperature value so you, and you can see he is sending it so i have a delay of five seconds here between each message okay so that's why there is some delay after sending each message now you can see it's a random number between 20 and 25 so uh, i am publishing this information to my broker now how do we know whether it is really reaching the broker or not okay so to really know it what you need is a subscriber who is subscribing to the same topic okay and who is also connected to the same broker so we may need a separate code for subscriber and we will have to do some coding there but uh, just to test this information there is a facility in aws itself so you can go here and there's an option test here you go here and you can create an mqtt client in aws server itself okay this is just for testing purpose so you create a dummy uh, dummy subscriber in the aws itself and you can check whether this message is really reaching there or not so to create that you just have to give the topic to which you want to subscribe so i want to subscribe to this topic temperature topic so we just give that and just keep uh, everything as such and just click subscribe to this topic okay so this is a dummy subscriber remember so we created that dummy subscriber he's subscribing to that topic and you can see already whatever data i'm sending from here here i'm just printing it the actual message i'm sending only the value okay so whatever value i am sending from here you will see same value is coming here also so every five second it will get updated here also so we are actually sending it and the broker is actually receiving it now the question is what to do with this data okay so that depends upon your application so as i mentioned before uh, if you like you can store this data in some kind of database online or you can send this as an email to someone else you can send it as an sms to someone else uh, things like that okay so for doing uh, anything with this data you will have to use other services from amazon as far as amazon iot is concerned it just accepts the published data and it can send uh, uh, messages to subscribers that's it if you want to do anything else you will have to use other services of aws so let's use some service and uh, try to send this message that we are getting uh, to someone's email okay so sending emails as well as sending sms they are managed by a service called sns simple notification service from amazon that's a different service from the iot okay but you can combine all these different services of amazon together using aws now before we do that we need to slightly modify our code okay so if you have to integrate uh, iot with any other service your data should follow a certain format called the json format json which stands for javascript object notation format so it's a very simple format uh, basically your data should look something like that so there should be two curly bracket and after that for example if you are sending temperature 
the temperature should be written within double quotes and the temperature value should be written following this something like that okay so curly bracket and uh, temperature and the temperature value uh, technically this part we call as the attribute and this part we call as the data for example if you want to send temperature at a particular time so maybe you will send uh, something like this okay 430 so this basically means temperature at 430 is 25 so data should be sent uh, in json format like this so attribute and value so we have to slightly modify our publisher code because currently we are just sending the temperature value just a number so that we need to modify so let me quickly go ahead and modify it so i will say my message it should look something like that those who are not familiar with python it's fine so this is the curly bracket then i will say temperature okay i should have this double quotes around temperature then we should have this colon and after that i will append this temperature value after that i will again put that closing curly bracket okay so now it looks like in json format and i'm going to send this as my message so previously we are just sending this temperature reading value so instead of that i'm just sending this message now let's run our code once again and see how it is going to come here okay so let me stop this and just rerun okay he's setting again so our topic is temperature topic so let me try to subscribe again okay subscribe to topic yes yeah, so now you can see this is how he's receiving data curly bracket temperature now if you make any mistake like uh, you forget to put this double quote or something when he gets data he will tell you like uh, we cannot display the message as json because the double quote is missing here okay so just keep that syntax in mind and send it properly okay so now data is coming as json now let's try to integrate the sns service of amazon with our iot so to integrate any other amazon service you need to go to this one act stands for action under that there is a rule and you have to create something called a rule so choose rule and give some name to your rule let's say okay my iot temperature you can call whatever you want you can give a description what this rule basically does after that you have to write something called a query okay so uh, we'll see like how queries are useful basically this is saying uh, which part of your message should be chosen and from which topic it should be chosen for example if i write uh, something like this okay select star from temperature topic this basically means whenever there is a message with the topic temperature topic select that entire message so the star is like a wild card which is basically saying select that take that entire message whenever a message comes on this particular topic if the message is coming on any other topic uh, this guy won't do anything okay so that's what we are saying after that we need to choose add action so when you choose add action you will see other aws services a lot of them are there so dynamodb this is a database service there is lambda function if you want to process data in the cloud you can use it we are interested in this one sns push notification which is used for sending sms as well as email so choose this one sns and choose configure action okay so now you are working on sns so in sns also there is the same concept of topic subscription and publishing so the terminologies are similar 
So somebody should publish to SNS using a topic and somebody should subscribe to SNS with a particular topic and he can uh, send message between the subscription subscriber and uh, publisher. So currently we don't have any topic. So create a new topic. Okay. So this topic has nothing to do with uh, the topic name we used in IoT. This can be totally different. So I can call it like my SNS or my IoT SNS topic, whatever name you prefer. Just create a topic and message format, choose a raw format. And there is one more thing called role. Okay, again, this comes under security because now two different Amazon services they are going to talk with each other, the IoT service and the SNS service. So there should be some kind of authentication between these two services. And that is done using something called role. And uh, these roles are coming from another service of Amazon called IAM, IAM, Identity Access Management, which is managing the identity of users when uh, two or more different services talk with each other. So more details we won't discuss now because again, that's a separate topic. So here you can just choose create a role and give some role name, some name, my IoT role, something like that. And just choose and say add action. And now we are back in this page. And in that page, you will see like uh, SNS comes here. So any message comes, on this particular topic, he will choose that entire message and he will send that message to the SNS service. Fine. Create rule. The next question is what should happen when the SNS service receives a, a message from IoT? So again, that you have to configure. So for that, you have to go back to your AWS console or the IoT console and search for SNS. So you'll see the simple notification service. Go there. And when you are here, this is the console for SNS. Looks similar to the console for IoT. Or our architecture is similar. If you come and if you click topic, you will already see the topic that you created from IoT. Okay. So effectively, you created a topic in SNS from the IoT console. Okay, so what you should do is you should take this ARN, Amazon resource number for this particular topic, and you need to configure the subscriber. Okay, so the message come to SNS. Now you have to configure the subscription here so that you can tell to which all subscribers this message should go. Okay, so come here, subscription, and choose create subscription and here he will ask for the topic AR which we just copied and give that and he's asking what protocol so if you want to send an email choose email if you want to send an SMS choose SMS okay both are done here so you choose email and you give the email address of the guy to whom the email should be sent okay do this much and choose create subscription once you do this Whichever email address you gave, he will receive an email from AWS and he will ask him to confirm that he is subscribing to this particular topic. This is needed, otherwise you can spam some other people by sending a lot of email to them. So in this case, they make sure only you, you say like, I am ready to accept this topic, you will start getting email, okay? So you choose confirm subscription and you'll get this notification like subscription confirm okay so now let's see what is going to happen i already got a new email and what is in the email what are data i am sending from here see so each five second i am sending a message from here and that message is going to iot broker then from IoT broker, he checks whether this topic is the topic I specified there. If the topic is matching, he's sending it into the SNS service. Now SNS service, he will check again the topic. If it is matching, he will send that message to everyone who has subscribed to this topic. So I can give 
any number of emails with the same uh, ARN for that particular topic and everyone will get the same email. Now when you are sending email again uh, for the free version uh, there is a restriction I guess currently it is 1000 emails per month if you send more than 1000 emails per month uh, there are some charges you have to check it so same way uh, if you come here you can go to subscription and create subscription and same ARN and you can choose SMS and you can give the number and you can create subscription now whenever he gets this uh, message he will send uh, the same message to this mobile number Okay. Now, SMS, they are not free, depending upon in which country you are and which operator you are using, there will be charges for SMS. It's, it's, there is nothing free in the free tire even for SMS. So better don't use SMS if you are not really interested to use it. Next, we will make a minor modification to the rule that we have used here. Because uh, as you can see, now I am sending... Uh, temperature every five seconds so it doesn't matter what is the temperature value I'm always sending it maybe we can modify it uh, say like I'm interested to check whether temperature is crossing some certain value okay if it is cert below certain value I don't care and I need to get an email only if it crosses some certain value so that you can do either in your program because in program you can modify like the local processing you can modify the program so that he sends message only if the temperature crosses some certain threshold value or you can do some certain level of uh, modification using the rules also so i'm going back to my rule and i'm slightly modifying this query part okay so click edit and now it is like uh, choose the ender message from this topic that's it so i'm adding one more condition here where and you can give the condition okay so the condition should be for the attribute so my only attribute here is temperature so this is the attribute and the value okay this is the attribute this is the value so i'm saying like i need to send this message to sns only when temperature is above say 23 i'm, I'm sending values between 20 and 25 he will get all the message, but only when the temperature value is above 23, he will give it to the SNS. Then only I will get email. If it is less than 23, I am not going to get it. Okay, so choose update and uh, let's look at our emails once more. Let me run the code and let's see what is happening. So 22, I shouldn't get an email. Yeah, there is no email. Only when it crosses uh, the specified value, we should get. Okay, now it is 24, which is more than the value we specified. And you can see like uh, we got an email. And the value is 23.9999. That's the actual value. Uh, this 24, it is because of the printing, the formatting, it's coming as 24. So I should be getting one, two, three emails by this time and you can see like i am getting three emails okay yeah so i guess as an introduction this much is enough uh, i'll be posting more videos in my youtube channel so if you are interested you can check it out uh, maybe in future after some days where you can find like how can you use other services of aws especially the lambda service uh, using which you can do a lot of data processing in the cloud. Currently, we did a minimal processing, like checking the, the threshold value. But if you want to process much more, for example, in the email you want to send, like uh, the temperature has crossed so and so uh, in words, something like that. Uh, those kind of things you can do only using so-called AWS Lambda. So I will be posting more videos there. I hope you got a broad idea of how to use AWS for developing your IoT applications. Thank you very much.